When someone asks how hard it is to build a rocket engine, it's logical to tell them about Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin. It's actually quite a long story with many ups and downs, but in the end, Blue Origin engines completely fail. Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. First off, we talk about Jeff's sole engine to get the rocket off the ground, the BE-3. Blue Origin took 10 years before they started developing the BE-3 engine. The BE-3 was big enough to go to orbit, but Blue Origin didn't design it as a low-cost orbital engine and didn't put it into a rocket intended to reach orbit. The Blue Origin BE-3 engine began development in the early 2010s and completed acceptance testing in early 2015. The engine is being used on the new Shepard suborbital rocket for which test flights began in 2015, and the first crewed flight occurred in 2021. The BE-3 has 160,000 pounds of force, 80 tons of thrust. Blue Origin needed to make and test a lot of BE-3-class engines and get to orbit by 2012 or 2014. To compare, the SpaceX Merlin 1D engine was developed by SpaceX between 2011 and 2012 with its first flight in 2013. The design goals for the new engine included increased reliability, improved performance, and improved manufacturability. In 2011, performance goals for the engine were a vacuum thrust of 690 kilonewtons or 155,000 foot-pounds, a vacuum-specific impulse ISP of 310 seconds or 3.0 kilometers a second, an expansion ratio of 16 as opposed to the previous 14.5 of the Merlin 1C, and chamber pressure in the sweet spot of 9.7 MPA or 1410 PSI. By August 2011, SpaceX was producing Merlin engines at the rate of 8 per month, planning eventually to raise production to about 33 engines per month. By 2015, they were making 250 Merlin engines per week. The biggest difference between them is the performance in the BE-3 and the Merlin. So far, while Merlin helped Falcon 9 become the broomstick that flies regularly, Falcon 9's success became too common, but BE-3 couldn't even get to orbit. And a new Shepard rocket recently suffered a catastrophic engine failure during its 23rd launch attempt due to BE-3 failure, ending a seven-year streak of 21 successes. Measuring about 15 meters or 49 feet tall and 3.7 meters or 12.1 feet wide and capable of producing about 50 tons or 110,000 pounds of force of thrust with its lone BE-3 at full throttle, New Shepard only made it about halfway through its nominal powered ascent before catastrophe struck. The first signs of trouble appeared about 62 seconds after liftoff in the form of flickers and flashes in New Shepard's exhaust, which is normally almost transparent. Less than two seconds after the first seemingly harmless flash, flames unintentionally burst from New Shepard's engine section and quickly surrounded the BE-3PM engine. Less than a second after that, the rocket's aft began shedding pieces and stopped producing thrust, triggering a solid rocket motor stored inside its deployable capsule. Regardless, everything doesn't seem so intense with BE-3, but enters BE-4, and the story will surely get more dramatic. Planned to fly as early as 2019, the first flight test of the new engine is now expected no earlier than the end of 2023 on the Vulcan rocket. The delivery's been a long time coming, and United Launch Alliance, or ULA, first agreed to buy these engines from Blue Origin way back in 2014. It was a bold bet from ULA, a blue blood and space launch, on a new entrant to the market. But with the BE-4 engine, Blue Origin founder Jeff Bezos was promising a relatively low-cost, high-performing engine with power output comparable to the Space Shuttle main engine. At the time of his initial agreement, Blue Origin said the BE-4 would be ready for flight by 2017. The BE-4's delay development has increased, and it's been the subject of keen interest, partly because ULA's been working on the new Vulcan rocket for a number of years, and that rocket's important to the future of the company. The military is also eager for this delivery as ULA is a primary provider of launch services to the Department of Defense alongside SpaceX. They hope Vulcan provides lower cost launch services with engines manufactured in the U.S. Finally, many in the space community are genuinely curious about the causes of the delays. The question now is why can't such a big company with such a large investment be successful? It's not just the challenging engineering. Since Smith arrived in the fall of 2017, some employees have struggled with his leadership style and complained that he acts too slowly, pushing Blue Origin to be more like a traditional aerospace company than a nimble new space startup. 
but from Smith's perspective, he's trying to implement culture transformation from a hobby shop atmosphere to that of a major aerospace contractor that can go out and win major NASA and Defense Department contracts. Many engineers escaped Jeff Bezos to join other companies, and those who announced they were leaving Blue Origin didn't specify why. However, cited in employee reviews on the job site Glassdoor and Indeed, many workers are frustrated with executive management and a slow bureaucratic structure. There were employees at the company who gave only one-star reviews. One employee said, I was really happy to work there, but I'm totally disappointed in the culture, horrible management, and lack of direction. So many people are leaving, I understand why. There's many opinions that managers are clueless, that there's some passion for space, but no follow-through. If that's the case, there's no reason why engineers who are passionate about space can continue to devote themselves to Blue Origin. Some of the engineers who left were part of Blue Origin's astronaut lunar lander program. Bezos' company lost its bid for a valuable NASA development contract in April when SpaceX was announced as the sole awardee under the space agency's human landing system program, and they won a $2.9 billion contract. But despite the Government Accountability Office last month denying Blue Origin's protest of NASA's decision, the company has continued to escalate its fight to be part of the HLS program. Blue Origin first launched a public relations offensive against SpaceX's Starship rocket and then on Monday sued NASA in federal court. This really creates resistance and frustration for most employees in the company. What they want is fair but not blind competition. Meanwhile, the company's actually burning money to hire lawyers for insane lawsuits instead of space research. After all, luckily, United Launch Alliance CEO Tori Bruno most recently showed off the BE-4 engine process. According to the update, the two flight engines needed for Vulcan's first flight will be able to deliver soon and Vulcan should be ready to fly before the end of the year. Now look, this is a picture of the freshly completed BE-4 engine in the stand at Blue Origins factory. Notably, it's also the first flight engine for Vulcan's first flight. In other shared photos, we can see both flight BE-4 engines side by side, in which the first fully assembled engine on your left was, and the second almost done engine on your right. Increasingly, also in a series of tweets that day, Bruno revealed that first flight FE-1 engine off to Texas for a quick acceptance test firing, then onto ULA's rocket factory in Decatur, Alabama. There, ULA engineers will test and integrate these engines into the Vulcan rocket and launch. This could be a new beginning for Blue Origin, but it could also be an end for the rocket company. Anyway, good luck to them. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Hey, don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section below. Your support is what motivates us to create more quality content. And that's it, and we thank you so much, and we hope to see you next time.